Welcome back to Short Splats. I'm Jared. Today, we're going to cover some haunted attraction history and take a look at the Brigantine Castle. So, before we get into the history of the Brigantine Castle, let's go to our videos and see what's going on with the Friday the 13th Minicon. May 13th and 14th in Blairstown, New Jersey. Let's go. Friday the 13th weekend, May 13th and 14th. It is all going down right here on the grounds of the Blairstown Diner. Lord Marie Taylor, Ron Milky, Ron Sloan, Debbie Voorhees, Tracy Savage. I mean, we have a lineup of guests coming out for the weekend. And not only are we celebrating Friday the 13th, but we are celebrating 13 Fanboy. And with that being said, we have the lead actress, Haley Greenbauer herself, making her way to Blairstown. This is history in the making, folks. Get your tickets now. F13 Minicon. That eventbrite.com. That is F13 Minicon. That eventbrite.com. Jason, Jason's here early. Folks, like I said, it's going to be a killer weekend in Blairstown going down at the iconic Blairstown Diner. Be a part of the history in the making. We'll see you there. Pretty awesome stuff. Uh, make sure you get your tickets now. F13 Minicon Eventbrite.com, which you just saw on the link. Now, we got some haunts opening up. We will be in attendance for this one. Feel the screams. March 12th. Let's go. Feel the screams book now. There is a sale right now. That reminds me, after I'm done recording this, I gotta get my tickets. <laughs> All right, but they're not the only ones open. We have Brighton Asylum open. Let's play that video. Get your tickets now. I'm sure both shows are going to be outstanding. Like I said, we will be in attendance for Field of Screams. I will actually be up there the whole weekend. I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be a good time. But today, like I said, we're going to cover the Brigantine Castle. Now, these are not our pictures. You can tell by the rounded tip, this picture was taken a long, long time ago. The This is no longer here. The pier is no longer there. It, uh burnt down sadly we'll get into a little bit of the history after i show off a couple more pictures so there's another old pick pretty cool structure though i mean i really wish it burnt it it closed before i was old enough to go so this is one of the few haunted attractions that i really haven't been to and uh it's sad because it's one of the first <laughs> And I got one last picture, which is this really cool ad for the Brigantine Castle. All right, let's get into the story of the Brigantine Castle. The Brigantine Castle was located on the Ocean Beach at 14th Street North and Brigantine Avenue in Brigantine, New Jersey. The Castle Pier was originally a dime beer place known as the Seashore Pier. Then, in the mid-70s, entrepreneur Carmen J. Rick, Ritchie Reese, uh, presented plans to the city to renovate the pier and construct the castle. R Ritchie managed to get city approval for the project by presenting a scale model and attractive artist renderings of the castle. Construction on the castle complex began on January 1, 1976 and was completed in 150 days to open for Memorial Weekend of 1976. 
There were four individuals four individuals involved in the design and creation of the castle complex. These individuals were Jim DeMuse, William Browning, Bob Dorian, and Carmen J. Ritchie, who was the designer, creator, and supervisor of the project. The construction of Brigantine Castle in such a short period of time was an amazing accomplishment, Mr. Mr. Ritchie said. We had a lot of fun and some pain building this great complex. For its day, it was something you had to see and probably would be today. Wow. In its early years, the castle was drawing a million tourists annually from along the East Coast. This was largely due to Ricky's, Richie's extensive advertising campaign, which included TV commercials in Philadelphia, New York, North Jersey, and others. Another reason for the success of the castle was the talents of its original manager, Sandy Badalini. According to Carmen Ritchie, her talents and creativity is what made Brigantine Castle one of the best haunted attractions of its era. Mr. Ritchie went on to describe Badalini as an actress who would put her whole heart and soul into every day's performances. Again, so even in the 60s, the actors are the heart. Although early business was great for Brigantine Castle, it was creating a lot of problems with the Brigantine community. The castle facilities were not adequate to handle the busloads of visitors to the pier. Kids were urinating in lawns, traffic and parking became a problem, and kids were knocking off people's doors asking to use their restroom. This led to a lawsuit being find, filed against Ritchie by Joe Higgins in the late 70s. Although Higgins' organization lost the lawsuit, the city did adopt some ordinances which limited charter bus traffic and castle advertising. This led to a drop in business at the castle. There are many factors which lead to the closing of the Brigantine Castle Complex. The main reason was an August storm was, which caused $500,000 worth of damage to the castle pier. Although Ritchie held a government flood insurance policy, the federal government refused to pay for the damages caused by the storm. Another reason for the demise of the complex was stricter straight regulation, regulations brought on by the May of 1984 fire, a great adventure which killed eight children in a haunted house. For those reasons, and because the castle was drawing fewer visitors, Carmen Ritchie decided to close the castle for good in 1984. He finally sold the pier in April of 87 for approximately $1 million. The new owner planned on demolishing the castle and building a recreation facility. Ironically, hmm, the week the demolition was supposed to take place, the castle caught on fire and completely burnt to the ground. The new owner never built anything on the site because all the pilings were damaged. All that remains of the castle today are some of those burnt pilings, and a lot of them are gone now. I don't think, maybe you can see one of the tides out, but mainly it's all gone. Brigantine Castle is one of the first haunted attractions, major park-like in the country. One of the first. Um, I remember hearing tales of rat rooms and a Frankenstein room and a Dracula room. It, it ugh, God, I wish I could have went. I was just born a little too late. But closing in '84, I mean, I just imagine what it could do today. Um, but Brigantine is Brigantine, so I, I don't know. It's one of my earliest memories because I grew up, my grandparents lived in Brigantine and my uncle would constantly drive me by to see the castle on the way to my grandmother's house. So it's always going to hold a special place in my heart. So I figured why not, you know, do a special on it. It is haunted attraction history. So that's all I have for you today with short splats, a little look into the Brigantine Castle. That article's from their uh, website that's keeps the history alive uh, you can also i believe there's a diner by where that stood and you can still find some of the memorabilia from that place there so do some googling a lot of cool images on there and that's all i have for you today at short splats i'm out